Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapos, joining you for case number 34 here on our YouTube channel. Okay, so before we get to start, may I invite you to please join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NTEX RN application and review to 500 nurses. Yes, you heard it right. We have increased our goal to 500 nurses for this year. And to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. And if you share this video to at least 10 of your friends, we'll pray for your success. Thank you so much for doing so in advance. So before we get to start, let us say congratulations to Ms. Elizabeth Aquino Buffetti, USRN from Birhen Milagrosa University Foundation, San Carlos City, Pangasinan, who passed the New York State Board of Nursing exam last January 31, 2025. That's just a couple of days ago. So let's learn from her success story. The NCLEX exam is my most challenging experience designed to test my critical thinking skills and my ability to make decisions in high pressure situations. Excellent insight. That's very true. The answers are hidden and it needs extreme care of analyzation. I agree. So you have to read each word piece by piece and make sure that you're able to form the bigger picture from your single insight for each of those words and phrases that you read about. And then it covers a vast range of topics and mastery of such divergent content is essential for success. Excellent reflection. That's the reason why we want you to engage in our YouTube channel because we only upload selected concepts that are high in terms of its frequency of occurrence in the test, okay? And for as long as I can remember, I received my eligibility on October 21st, 2023, enrolled with the Ray A. Gapos Review System as a February batch for the year 2024. At that moment, I am working as an OFW operating room nurse under the Ministry of Health Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And I admit, it's hard to study while at work. It was December 21, 2024, when I got my annual vacation. I enrolled for the Quick Fix Online for three days. That was January 3 to 5 and attended face-to-face -face bootcamp Baguio on January 8 to 20. That was just recently. My next bootcamp, by the way, is on April 2 to 12. Please Book ahead of time because seats usually run out in the run-up to the test or in the run-up to the scheduled bootcamp. Okay, so after that, she says, I never regret the day I decided to join the face-to-face -face bootcamp review. It really helped me get through with my exam with confidence. The syndromic approach and gaga and gaga expression of survey has thoroughly prepared me to pass such a difficult exam. And I can truly say that it is the best ever word of wisdom and technique strategy that helped me understand difficult concepts and made everything easy and simple. I'm still in skepticism that this NCLEX nightmare has finally ended. I wrote my exam on the 31st of January, 2025 and passed at 85 questions in three hours and 30 minutes. Excellent pace. She knows how to pace herself properly. Good luck to all the future RNs and more success. Believe you're, you'll be next. Commit your way to the Lord and he shall bring it to pass. Okay, congratulations, Miss Elizabeth Aquino Buffete from Virgen Milagrosa University Foundation, San Carlos City, Pangasinan. Congratulations, you deserve a salute from our team. And let's focus now on the things that we need to remember. But before we do so, let me just inform you about our promo. If you have limited budgets, you can get a free review from us if you process your NCLEX RN application with ITAPS GAPUS. So ITAPS is our International Test Applications Processing Services, and you get a free review if you pass, if you decide okay, to process through ITAPS. So this is one testimonial from our USRN from the University of Baguio, Michelle Ocampo Tavera. Thank you, ITAPS Gapos team, for being part of my success, a worry free and hassle free processing of my NCLEX exam application. To my processing officers, Ms. Diana and Ms. Ace, thank you for having the patience to handle all my requests from starting with my application up to the scheduling of my exam itself. To all the mentors who, have, who gave fantastic mentorship and constant guidance, especially to Sir Francis and Namche. 
So Mom Joanne has always been very active and gives prompt responses to all my queries, to Sir George, who managed to assist my mother in sending the review materials here in Dubai, to all the IT, Sir Eric, Sir Daniel, who assisted me especially when there were errors in dealing with my TOP account, QBank, and Corshells. You all played a great part in my journey that marks a significant milestone in my career. It was all worth it. Until then, thank you so much. More power and may God bless the Ray Gapos Review System. Thank you very much for the trust and continued loyalty and support. Ms. Michelle Ocampo Tavera, USRN. She passed all her tests through the Ray Gapos System, from HAAD to NCLEX, everything. Okay. And let me first mention this public advisory, Dr. Ray, that's me. And the mentors of the Ray A. Gapos Review System are not part of another center named Gapos Review or Gapos Review Academy. We're not in any way part of that entity. Okay, now let's move on now to our next generation NCLEX RM, case number 34. But before that, let me pose a challenge to everyone. Look at this uh, important topic here. Are you even considering studying hypomagnesemia? If not, then you're in for a big surprise if you're taking the test anytime soon. But take note, one lady at age 66 passed the test. Her name, Flor Pangilinan Villare, USRN from Algo Foundation College in Naga City, our record holder for passing NGN at age 66 last December 2, 2024. Now, on to our discussion of hypomagnesemia. Now, it occurs when the serum magnesium concentration is less than 1.8 milligrams per deciliter or less than 0.17 millimoles per liter. Now, there are literatures that say that the normal magnesium level is 1.7 to 2.2 milligrams per deciliter. A point one difference would not harm you. So for as long as you are able to interpret the manifestations of how to spot the condition, then the normal value is not a cause for alarm. Remember in the test, the normal values will be um, made explicit on your test. So it doesn't require you to memorize your normal values anymore, okay? So hypomagnesemia usually occurs with hypokalemia and hypokalemia, And these three electrolyte imbalances, hypomagnesemia, hypokalemia, and hypokalemia, could lead to a condition known as torsado point, which can potentially develop into ventricular fibrillation, the most dangerous type of arrhythmia. So it's very important, therefore, to assess the client's magnesium level. Otherwise, the heart reacts. Okay, so there are certain drugs that may cause hypomagnesemia, and this would include, remember, your calf P, cisplatin, which is a chemotherapeutic agent, and it's a nephrotoxic agent. Ampothericin B, which is also nephrotoxic, and that's usually given when your clients have fungal infections. Furosemide, which is a loop diuretic, and your proton pump inhibitors like your pantoprazole, omeprazole, Okay, pay particular attention to your prazoles. Now, if your patient has been taking proton pump inhibitors for a long period of time, chances are they've not been able to absorb adequate magnesium, and so they can suffer from hypomagnesemia. Now, high intake of zinc, approximately 142 milligrams of zinc per day, that is too high. Because the recommended dietary allowance for zinc is just 8 milligrams per day for females and 11 milligrams per day for males. So which gives us the range of 8 to 11 milligrams per day as your recommended dietary allowance for zinc. So the higher intake of zinc you have, the less magnesium absorption occurs, which simply means that you have to regulate your zinc intake if you want to maintain a balance of your magnesium levels. So what are the foods that could potentially increase your zinc intake? First and foremost, your seafoods, okay? The single highest zinc-containing seafood is your oyster, 
Okay? So seafoods like tuna, sardines, okay? All of these can add on to your zinc intake, which could potentially decrease the absorption of magnesium. Other foods that contain zinc could be your beef, okay? Including your dark chocolates, okay? Now, how would you know that your client is having hypomagnesemia? Now, they're usually, they're usually neurologic symptoms that includes, remember, your TLH, tremors, lethargy or decreasing level of consciousness, and hyperreflexia. So these three, tremors, lethargy, and hyperreflexia should raise the red flag on your end that you have to assess the client for hypomagnesemia. Other symptoms, you have your TC now or take care now. You have your true suicide or carpopedal spasm that's usually elicited by using a BP cuff and inflating it 20 millimeters mercury above, okay, the blood pressure, okay, that you have, okay, the stolic blood pressure. Now, you can also elicit your trussus sign by using a tourniquet. So if there's an obstruction in the circulation of the distal part of your hands, okay, then the digits will become spastic. So that's trussus sign. Vostek sign, on the other hand, is facial muscle twitching that is elicited when you percuss the area of the facial nerve just right in front of the ears. And that could potentially send the facial muscles on that side twitching, okay? So you would note, or if you're trying to recall that your Trousseau and Vostek signs, these are also associated with hypocalcemia. So these are manifestations that are not exclusive to hypomagnesemia. Trousseau and Vostek sign are also present in hypocalcemia. And of course, you have your gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea and anorexia plus muscle weakness. That could be secondary to the decrease in the potassium levels of the client. Now, how do we supplement our magnesium? Remember to source it from your food. So remember the code BANDS. So we begin with banana and black beans and then avocado, nuts, your dark chocolates. And this is what's funny. Dark chocolate contains zinc that could potentially decrease the absorption of magnesium, but at the same time, it's a good source of magnesium. So if it contains both zinc and magnesium, you can go ahead and include it in your diet. So the popular brands of dark chocolate include your lint and Godiva. And of course, spinach and seeds like sunflower seeds or flax seeds, these are all very, very good sources of magnesium. Remember the code BANDS, banana and black beans, avocado, nuts, dark chocolates, spinach, and seeds like sunflower and flax seeds. So hypomagnesemia can be treated with either oral, intravenous, or intramuscular administration of magnesium sulfate. That's the treatment of choice. That's the priority treatment. And remember, hypomagnesemia may, may occur in clients with, remember, HALU, the conditions, hypercalcemia, alcoholism, those who are taking loop diuretics as a form of treatment like furosemide, and of course, when the client is suffering from uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Remember the code HALU may potentially lead to hypomagnesemia hypercalcemia, alcoholism, loop diuretics treatment, and uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. So before we use what we learned to analyze a case, let me just share with you the good feedback of those who are using my book, NCLEX RN311, the next generation quick fix edition. Hello, Sir Ray. It's coming from Leslie. I passed po. Thank you so much. Hindi po kaya... Hindi ko po kaya kung wala po ang tulong nyo. And I said, wow, congratulations. Which part of our review helped you the most? And she says, all, meaning everything. I utilize all your unlimited resources. That's true. Our program is unlimited. Our use of resources is unlimited. You don't need your apps. We provide them to you for free. We have our own. We don't use apps that are westernized. No, that doesn't fit what the Filipino learners need. So she attended three comprehensive reviews, 
one boot camp, two quick fix face to face, finish all activities in the core shell, answer DOP, watch the latest YouTube videos, and you have to do that because I upload every week. Follow the study guide from survey, and lastly, the powerful 311 book that I read a day before my exam. That's a common denominator of our passers. NCLEX 311, this book is the last book that they read before taking the test. So let's now analyze case number 34. A client who is being rehabilitated for alcohol abuse is sent to the emergency department of a hospital due to suspected ventricular fibrillation as reflected on the electrocardiogram results. Here we go. So there are certain part of the first sentence that should give you a clue. First, the client is suffering from alcohol abuse, which could be a risk factor for electrolyte imbalance, specifically hypomagnesemia. The client is suspected of having ventricular fibrillation and a precursor of ventricular fibrillation could be torsado point, which is primarily associated with low magnesium levels. Okay, so low magnesium levels, torsado point could lead to ventricular fibrillation. So that should help you come up with an idea. Medical history reveals treatment for peptic ulcer disease. Treatment with peptic ulcer disease usually would involve your proton pump inhibitors. Remember the prazoles, pantoprazole, omeprazole, okay? And then previous treatment with cisplatin, bingo. That's a chemotherapeutic agent that's nephrotoxic. Whenever the client receives nephrotoxic medications plus loop diuretics, then you can be sure they could be at risk for an electrolyte imbalance like hypomagnesemia. So the nurse should further assess for risk factors associated with which condition. Hyperkalemia, no. Usually what's associated with hypomagnesemia would be hypokalemia. Hypercalcemia, no. It's hypocalcemia. Hyponatremia, no. But definitely the answer is contained in option number four, hypomagnesemia. So I just hope you learned from our discussion today. And may I invite you to join our hundreds of thousands of pastors from more than 36 countries all over the world who pass the NGN through the Regapo system. Now, how do we study at the Regapo system? We make sure that you use technology. And here at the Regapo system, our learning tools are published by world-renowned Publishers. So we have also our own learning management system, and we provide you with very conducive learning environment where you are given the opportunity to use. We're the only one in the world with an NJN simulator. Okay, if you want to have a preliminary view of how it feels to take the actual NPLEX test, come and visit us and use our simulation laboratory for free if you already have your authority to test. So may I invite you to join us for our next NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. Review fee starts at 3,499. Your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand and limited video recorded lessons, QBank and three books, NGN strategies and sample questions by me, Doc Ray, and of course, our quick fix session. So. You can also choose to have weekday schedules, weekend schedules, AM schedule, PM schedule, evening classes. We have different durations. You can choose like a five-hour class or a two-hour class or a nine-hour class. We all have it here. Okay. So once again, this is your mentor, your fuck check buddy Ray Gapus at your service until our next video. To those of you who are taking the test anytime soon, take care and don't forget to subscribe and share our videos to at least 10 of your friends and you'll definitely become successful in your test. Take care.